Do you feel frustrated with mainstream ideologies? Do you ever complain about establishment bias? Or do you use social media? Well, if you're an active duty soldier, then these absurdly common factors that accompany being a critical thinking human being now coin you as a potential terrorist or radical extremist who could soon kill your coworkers. Wired Magazine just obtained a leaked document from within the U.S. Army's terrorism advisory organization called a Tactical Reference Guide for Radicalization into Violent Extremism. The document's intended to recognize internal threats within the Army ranks. And within it is a very comprehensive flowchart of certain risk factors. The first column of the chart, called Observe Personal Issues, lists indicators of predeposition to radicalization, including complaining about bias, needing empowerment, being socially withdrawn, believing in government conspiracies, lacking positive identity with count country, unit, family, and friends, exhibiting reclusiveness. If one exhibits any of these common qualities of being a living, breathing human being, leadership must notify the chain of command in order to maintain unit cohesion and morale. So basically, if a soldier projects some sort of individual thought, then they are officially deemed a hazard. On another section of the chart, there are more serious flags for radicalization that call for the immediate investigation, including being sympathetic to radical groups, visiting extremist websites, attending extremist rallies, isolating oneself, attempting to recruit others to extremist causes. Notice that it doesn't even say terrorist. It says an even more vague characterization of extremist and radical. So what is considered extremist and what is considered to be radical? Could that entail realizing that you don't want to sacrifice your life for unjust wars and could recruitment of others to extremist causes mean simply talking to others in your unit about concerns with U.S. foreign policy? But perhaps the most bizarre thing of all is in another section of the chart that lists more risk factors for radicalization, one of which says social networks. Yep. So basically, they're taking one of the only links to human interaction that soldiers may have and labeling it as a warning sign of terrorism. Now, if you think this is all meaningless drivel, think again. You know, I was under the impression that something needed to constitute an actual threat before the government tried to make a pre-crime arrest against you. But apparently not. One only has to look at what happened to Brandon Robb, 26-year-old decorated Marine veteran of both Iraq and Afghanistan, when he started spouting off anti-government opinions on his Facebook page. Check out some of these posts. He says, friends, you deserve to know the truth. There have been an overwhelming amount of evil enacted and planned against you, your children, your countrymen. It's in great scope. Your government is evil. It's as simple as that. The cavalry is coming. Here's another one. Dear friends in the military, the time for choosing has come. Will you continue to ignore the obvious lie of 9-11 or will you stand and fight for your people? And yet another. I'm starting the revolution. I'm done waiting. Well, soon after writing these posts, the FBI, accompanied by secret service agents, went to Brandon's house, detained and committed him to a psychiatric ward for psychological evaluation for about a week. He was finally released after a judge ruled his detainment unlawful. Brandon Robb's case should be a wake-up call. Are people going to be nabbed up simply for vocalizing their opposition to the government now? And keep this in mind. Brandon is not actively enlisted in the military, and he owns no firearms. However, he is pissed. Pissed because he found out the wars he fought for were based on lies. And you know what? I would be too if I spent the last six years of my life fighting two wars founded entirely on falsehoods. The government claimed that he was taken to be evaluated because they were worried that he might hurt himself or others based on what he had written. But nothing that he wrote could really be construed as a threat against himself or anyone else. Now let's break this down. Do you really think the government gives a crap about veterans' mental health? If they did, maybe they would make it easier to treat PTSD or actually provide veterans with the benefits they deserve. Like helping to prevent the 18 veteran suicides that happen every single day. But no. Seems like they only take notice if someone's speaking out about the lies that underwrite the establishment's justification for war. This is the message. It's become an occupational hazard in the military to be a human being. If you don't obey and conform to whatever orders your chain of command is giving you, then you're a risk.
plain and simple. Maybe it would be better for the military if they just got rid of soldiers altogether and replaced them with robots. Apparently, it's perfectly acceptable to give your life to fight in the government's wars, but don't you dare question its motives and don't you dare express yourself. Look, the most powerful weapon that you can hold is the truth. And the truth is exactly what scares the establishment the most.